Hello, I am back with another video and today I will talk about the great Malcolm X. During the 50s and 60s, there was one man who wanted more equal rights for black Americans and that man was Malcolm X. We'll focus on his past as Malcolm Little and then we will dive into the man he became which is Malcolm X. But before I go any further, please subscribe and hit the like button, also share and comment on this video. I would really appreciate it. Disclaimer. I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Malcolm X, originally known as Malcolm Little, was born in Omaha, Nebraska. He was the fourth of seven children to Louise Little and Earl Little. Malcolm's family were pro-black and had an organization dedicated to pan-Africanism. The organizations became a problem to the Ku Klux Klan, to the point that four of his uncles were killed. Malcolm's family were frequently harassed by the Black Legion, a white racist group who burned their family home in 1929. While he was only six years old, his father was killed by the Black Legion. The police stated that it was a streetcar accident, but we all know that's a lie. Malcolm's family got life insurance benefits for $1,000, which is equivalent to $18,000 today. So every month they only give her $8. Malcolm's mother couldn't feed his family or pay rent, so she had to make ends meet. She tried to remarry again, but the man knocked her up and disappeared. In 1938, she got a nervous breakdown and was committed to Kalamazoo Regional Psychiatric Hospital. Malcolm and his siblings were separated and sent to foster homes. When Malcolm was in school, he was considered the brightest student, getting straight A's and becoming president of his class. Malcolm dropped out of high school because he was discouraged to believe that he didn't have any value in society. Malcolm believed that there is no place for a black man in a white man's world. Around age 14 to 21, Malcolm was living with his half-sister in Flint, Michigan for a short while. He moved to New York, Harlem, and started a new life by pimping, racketeering, drug dealing, gambling, and robbery. Malcolm also did sex work for rich white men. He provided services to this man, William Paul Lennon. William would ask Malcolm to undress each other and pick him up like a baby and lay him on the bed, stand over him, and he would sprinkle baby powder all over him and Malcolm would massage until he climaxed. Fun fact. It has been said that Malcolm claimed to be homosexual to get out of the military. People also stated that he made remarks like one to fight with the Japanese during that era. Malcolm's sexuality has been the subject of discussion and people are claiming that he was bisexual. And that during his youth, he had sexual encounters with both boys and girls and through his adulthood, he had sexual encounters with both men and women. Bob Beebe stated that when he and Malcolm were young, Malcolm saw a teenager jerking off and ordered the boy to jerk him off. Malcolm had a sexual encounter with a transvestite, Willie May. When he was working at Jimmy's Chicken Shack at Harlem, he befriended a man named John Elroy Sanford, later became Red Fox. Malcolm was known as Detroit Red, and Sanford was known as Chicago Red. Malcolm was also close friends with Billie Holiday. Malcolm was dating a woman named Gloria Struther. Gloria was educated, nice, soft-spoken, and encouraging. Malcolm respected her deeply, unlike his other side chicks. Malcolm, however, cheated on her with a white woman named Beatrice. When Gloria found out about it, she distanced herself and never spoke to Malcolm ever again. When Malcolm got out of prison, he saw her again and this time she was a complete wreck. She was a prostitute, hooked on cocaine, never finished school or went to college. Malcolm deeply blamed himself on how her life turned out. Malcolm X during his youth was arrested numerous times. One was in 1944. He was arrested for larceny and spent four months in jail. Malcolm X was arrested in 1946 for grand larceny. Malcolm, another man named Jarvis, and his girlfriend Beatrice along with another woman decided to retrieve his stolen $1,000 watch from a pawn shop. They were charged with breaking and entering in firearms possession. Malcolm and Jarvis were sentenced 8 to 10 years in prison. Malcolm's girlfriend and the other woman refused to charge Malcolm and Jarvis with rape. Malcolm's girlfriend and the other woman only spent 6 months in prison. When Malcolm was in prison, he was writing to Lennon sexually hoping he would bail him out of prison. While he was in prison, he met John Bembry, a fellow convict who influenced Malcolm to value knowledge. Under Bembry's influence, Malcolm started to read and educate himself. He began to receive letters from his siblings about the nation of Islam. Malcolm started to develop interest, but he had to follow the rules of being a Muslim, which was to never eat pork and not to smoke cigarettes. Malcolm completely surrendered himself and wrote a letter to Elijah Muhammad. He vowed to let go of all his inner demons and humbly serve God. Malcolm also changed his last to X because Little was the name of a slave owner. When he got out of prison, he went to Chicago to visit Elijah Muhammad and became assistant minister. 
He started to open temples in Boston, Philadelphia, and he became a leader in a temple in Harlem. He started to recruit more African Americans into the Nation of Islam, almost every month. He had more temples in Springfield, Massachusetts, Hartford, Connecticut, and Atlanta. Malcolm X was the perfect vessel to represent the religion because he was tall, handsome, and well-groomed. He had a powerful presence that captivated people and he knew how to articulate his words. In 1955, Malcolm met Betty Sanders at one of his lectures and then again at a dinner party. Malcolm and Betty started dating and he proposed to her. They got married and had six daughters. The American public first became aware of Malcolm X after Hinton Johnson's incident. Johnson was a Nation of Islam member who was beaten by police and arrested. Malcolm X was alert about the incident and marched to the police station demanding to see him. Malcolm insists that Johnson should seek medical attention from the hospital. After his return, almost 4,000 people gathered in front of the police station and Malcolm X and an attorney posted bail for Johnson and two other Muslims. Malcolm couldn't post bail for Johnson until his arraignment, considering his situation to be at an impasse. Malcolm X stepped outside and dispersed the crowd, which is just a hand signal. His action made him a target and the New York Police Department placed Malcolm under surveillance. Malcolm X fame grew and his comments on political views started to be reported on radio, television, and in print. He started to meet nation leaders such as Genemal Abdel Nasser, Ahmed Sikhu Touré, Kenneth Kamna, and Fidel Castro. He became the second most influential leader of the Nation of Islam after Elijah Muhammad. He inspired Cassius Clay, famously known as Muhammad Ali, and mentored and guided Louis Farrakhan and Wallace D. Muhammad, who was known as Elijah Muhammad's son. Everything was going well for Malcolm. He has found his purpose. But he started to notice major problems within the religion. Malcolm noticed that the Nation of Islam's committee was not vocal about police brutality that black Americans were facing at the time. Police were savagely destroying their mosque and hurt innocent people. Malcolm wanted to take violent revenge against the police and was denied by Elijah Muhammad. Rumors were being spread that Elijah Muhammad was having extramarital affairs with his secretaries, which was a serious violation to the Nation of Islam teachings. Malcolm accused Elijah of child rape and seven of those girls were pregnant. According to Malcolm, he said Elijah wanted him dead because he found an explosive device in his car. When JFK died, Malcolm made a remark about his assassination that made America angry, and he was suspended for 90 days. Still a media favorite, Malcolm decided to just leave the Nation of Islam and start a black nationalist organization by doing this would allow him to work with other civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King and heighten the political conscience of the black community. He also found other organizations such as Muslim Mosque Incorporate, which was a religious organization and founded the Organization of African American Unity, a secular group that advocate pan-Africanism. When Malcolm left the Nation of Islam, he made a famous speech called the ballot or the bullet Malcolm advised African Americans to exercise their right to vote but warned them if the government still denied their voting right, they could use necessary force. Malcolm at this time converted to Sunni Muslim. He also started to travel all over the world. He went to Saudi Arabia and seen different Muslim of all races praying together. And that's when he realized that race can be overcome. He also went to African countries, did interviews with officials and spoke on radios and television. When he returned to the United States, he shared what he had learned about what was happening in Democratic Republic of the Congo. He expressed how the dictator and president of America are working together to stop the rebellion that was occurring. Malcolm also expressed his frustration on how ethnic minorities in Europe were being treated. The Nation of Islam was not happy with Malcolm and so were the FBI. A leader of Temple No. 7 ordered the bombing of Malcolm's car. Elijah Muhammad had deep hatred for Malcolm to the point that he made remarks such as wanting him dead. Malcolm's wife received a phone call from the FBI stating that her husband is good as dead. Malcolm X's house was vacated due to the Nation of Islam, stating that the house belongs to Elijah Muhammad. The night before postponing the eviction, the house was destroyed by fire. Now the FBI had informants in the Nation of Islam, and those informants were telling the FBI everything. The FBI wanted to offer Malcolm protection, but he refused because he knew that they were just going to kill him regardless. So Malcolm decided to protect himself against the Nation of Islam. Malcolm made it well known that the Nation of Islam is trying to kill him. On February 21, 1965, Malcolm X was preparing to address the Organization of African American Unity in Manhattan's Audubon Ballroom when someone in the 400-person audience yelled, N-word. Get your hand out of my pocket. As Malcolm X and his bodyguards tried to quell the disturbance, a man rushed forward and shot him once in the chest with a sawed-off shotgun, and two other men charged the stage firing semi-automatic handguns. One gunman, Nation of Islam member Talmadge Hare, also known as Thomas Hagen, was beaten by the crowd before police arrived. 
Malcolm X was pronounced dead at 3.30 p.m., shortly after arriving at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. The autopsy identified 21 gunshot wounds to the chest, left shoulder, arms, and legs including 10 buckshot wounds from the initial shotgun blast. Malcolm X's story should be an inspiration to all of us that no matter where we come from, our past does not shape our future. Malcolm's story is a story of triumphs and dedication to his community. I highly recommend you read the autobiography of Malcolm X and watch his biography movie directed by Spike Lee. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more future videos and share to Facebook, Instagram, or other social media platforms. Finally, leave a comment for suggestion or tell me about your thoughts on this video. Greatly appreciate it. Bye.